Hi, I'm Jennifer and this is Kate. And today we're reviewing four different faith-based movies and shows that we have seen and enjoyed recently. We've been having a pretty good run with these lately. So today we're excited to share our thoughts on each one. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we're going to start with the most recent one first. This past weekend, we went to see the movie Jesus Revolution, starring Kelsey Grammer and Jonathan Rumi. And this movie did surprise us in several ways. So it is based on the true story of the faith revival that started in Southern California in the 70s and spread all around the country. So at that time, people of all different ages, from all different walks of life, they, especially the hippies, they were starting to turn away from the violent drug culture and rediscover Jesus. And we both definitely very much enjoyed this movie. For starters, it is a great look at life in the 70s. Oh my gosh, if you want to remember life in the 70s, I, I just barely remember the 70s. I was like a tiny top, but even so, I remember not really liking it because there was always like war or violence on TV and the fashions were quite dismal and the hairstyles were awful. I mean, those big, super wide sideburns, those always creep me out, just no. <laughs> so the movie portrays the 70s very vividly. Mm -hmm. It would be- <laughs> Flashbacks. It would be good for history class because it really comes alive. So we enjoyed mostly that little glimpse into the past, but we were also surprised to discover that this is not just you know, like another feel good, happy Jesus movie. I mean, it definitely has moments like that, but it goes way deeper. The characters have all sorts of flaws and challenges and the movie doesn't beat around the bush on that. So it is a very true to life portrayal. And I was surprised to learn that the Calvary Church or the Calvary Chapel where this movement started, it is in Costa Mesa, California. And I actually lived there for several years in the late 70s. So I lived in the same town as Pastor Chuck and I never even knew all this was going on. But it was also very surprising just how rampant and dominant the drug culture was and the political scene and just how open it was, how domineering it was over everything. The movie captures that really well. In fact, some of the, like, the drug party scenes, it reminds me of those old movies that we were forced to watch in elementary school that you know shows what it's like to be on LSD and the, the moral is don't do drugs, kids. <laughs> And so some of those scenes are a little bit graphic, not overly so, but just a heads up if you're watching maybe with younger teens. And finally, we were really surprised to discover that probably our favorite character in the show was not one of the major stars, but actually a guy in a supporting role. And that was the reporter who came out to write a story on the Jesus Revolution. We're not gonna give away any spoilers, but I was impressed how he was able to keep an open mind about everything that was going on. And then we we just loved his opinion or what he said at the end of the movie. That's going to stick with us for a long time. So overall, we definitely enjoyed this movie and would recommend it. And if you're wondering about age range, we would probably say teens and up. So our next movie is St. Michael Meet the Angel, which came out last October. And we were super excited to see this one, a whole movie about St. Michael. But this one had its pros and cons. Some of it we really loved and then others not so much. Yeah, it was kind of a mixed bag. On the pro side, this one definitely had beautiful cinematography. There are wonderful aerial views of the different cathedrals and the different holy places. So I think just for that alone, this movie is worth seeing. And it's also great that movies like this are even being made. Uh, there's not a lot of movies about St. Michael out there. So, I think any. <laughs> yeah, so if you had someone who wanted to learn more about St. Michael, this would be a great option. So having said that, this one definitely felt more like a really formal documentary than a movie. I mean, the scenery was amazing, yes, but there weren't a lot of stories in here about St. Michael himself. And there are a lot of amazing St. Michael stories out there, just not in the movie. <laughs> so it definitely leaves you scratching your head a little bit, maybe wanting a little bit more. Instead, you end up with a lot of interviews with people who are sharing their personal faith testimonies, 
which is great, right? Don't get me wrong, but some of those stories were hard to follow and quite a few of them were in Spanish or Italian. There's a lot of voiceover going on, so just heads up about that. And then this is super petty, yes, <laughs> but one of the narrators through the whole movie consistently said St. Michael the Archangel. So I've never heard him called Michael the Archangel <laughs> before, and I kept thinking the golden arches of McDonald's and please stop saying it that way. It just totally got on my nerves. And then at the end, it does kind of devolve into a pseudo commercial with uh, different priests just plugging their books or their marriage counseling. And it doesn't make a lot of sense. It's just why random. Not, yeah, not what you were expecting. The infomercial at the end definitely threw me for a loop. So again, it was just not quite what we were expecting. Of the four programs we're reviewing today, it's probably our least favorite. It comes in at the number four position. It was definitely worth seeing, but just, yeah. Um, we felt like the, it could have had a better execution. Mm -hmm. So again, worth seeing, but it, it is not what the title suggests. Next up is a YouTube exclusive series from EWTN called James the Less, and this one is so much fun. <laughs> So it follows James Little, who is a young atheist who is out of work, and he gets a desperately needed job as a janitor at, funnily enough, James the Less Catholic Church. So we see the young atheist at work. James is in the church working. He's trying to make sense of all these unusual and interesting things that these Catholics do. And also he's meeting a lot of very interesting Catholic parishioners, including the beautiful Anne-Marie, who is discerning a religious vocation, and also Father Burns, who is the no nonsensical <laughs> priest in charge. So it's a very funny Catholic meets Hallmark sort of series. So we definitely have been enjoying it. We're not gonna give you any spoilers except a heads up because the first episode is extremely short. It's only four minutes. So if you watch it, don't think, well, what the heck, where's the rest of it? It's just four minutes. The rest of the episodes are a little bit longer, but they are all under 10 minutes. And season one has wrapped with five episodes, but good news is that, is that they are making a season two. We have read that the scripts for the next episodes are already in the works. Hooray, because this is one we definitely want to see more of. It is family friendly, it is laugh out loud, funny in places, and we both give it a thumbs up. So lastly, we did want to talk about season three of The Chosen. We are huge fans here, as you know, and we were extras last summer in the feeding of the 5,000. So we were definitely out there in the Texas heat for the season finale, episode eight, but recently we've had a lot of people ask us, hey, were you able to see yourselves in episode eight? And the answer is no, no <laughs> we no. have not. No. Um, we were sitting in the Matthew section of the field that day, but there aren't a lot of close-ups of that location, so we have not been able to find ourselves. Having said that though, we have spent zero time trying to zoom in on any of the still shots from the crowd and try to pick ourselves out, just haven't done it. We're just good knowing we were there. We did find our names in the end credits though, so that was a lot of fun. But we also just wanted to talk about some of our favorite moments from season three as a whole. We definitely had some favorite things, moments from season three. Our favorite character, I think, was Jairus, whose daughter is very, very sick. So when he realizes that she is, in fact, dying, he rushes out to find Jesus. Uh, but they are struggling to get back to the house because of the crowd and everything going on. And then when they do get back, it's too late and she's dead and he is just standing there crying. And this scene just gets me as a parent because he's saying, but I tried, I did everything. I went to get Jesus. I went as fast as I could. And you know, don't parents do that? We just do everything that we can for our children. So I don't know, that scene just really got me. The actor who plays Jairus, he did a fantastic job. Well done. And then another favorite scene was that scene from the end of episode eight. 
that was just wow. Yeah, wow. We, we're not going to spoil yeah. it, but if you've seen it, you know. You know, yeah, you know, you know what we're talking and about. And the chosen team did such a good job keeping that under wraps. It was a, it was a phenomenal surprise. Yeah, that was amazing. So those were a couple of our favorite moments from season three. If you've seen everything from season three, what was your favorite? Leave us a comment down below. We'd love to hear what you enjoyed the most. Well, that also goes for any of the other shows we talked about today. So if you've seen Jay James Les or Jesus Revolution or St. Michael meet the angel <laughs> then let us know what you thought down in the comments yay or nay what were your favorite parts so we are definitely grateful here that there seem to be more and more really good options for faith-filled entertainment so that's a look at what we've been watching recently we hope you enjoyed today's video thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time bye, bye.